The Celtics steal game two from the Toronto Raptors, outlasting them in that fourth quarter. I'm Sierra Goodwill here with Jimmy Toscano, Joe Swapevone, and Bobby Manning. And let me tell you, Nick Nurse, not so happy with his team, but even unhappier with the refs. The frustrating part about it is this, is he shoots 14 free throws, which is as much as our whole team shoots. That's the frustrating part. Well, I just see him as unfortunate, Doug, to be honest with you. I mean, I think uh, I think Smart fouled the shit out of him on the one. So yeah. there, there's one there's one for you. A lot of complaining from oh, Nick man. Nurse. <laughs> uh, I, know, I know you have plenty to say is. about it. Is this the right call for him to take this approach with the media after the game now that he's down 0-2? This is so it sad. This is your classic deflecting blame. Why doesn't Nick Nurse criticize himself mm. for not calling a timeout on the final possession of the game, instead letting Fred Van Flail and Fred Van Feet <laughs> go running down the court and ha throwing up a Hail Mary that had no chance? Oh, come on, man. His family's there. I he mean, wanted to be the hero. Un un <laughs> unbelievable that Nick Nurse is taking this approach. Brad Stevens rarely has, you know, harsh he would never for, for the officials or taking a slight at another – team's player like Jason Tatum almost kind of taken away from his aggressiveness saying you know you know they treated him right tonight dude your guys maybe could take a page out of Jason Tatum's book and drive to the lane because you took zero free throws in the first half that's why you had as many free throws as Jason Tatum because you never did anything to get to the line yeah, this is the formation of a team that has a massive talent gap right now and you look at the Celtics, they're getting the star calls for a guy like Tatum. And this is what he's been complaining for. This is what he's been throwing his arms up in the air for years for this kind of game where he can get 14 free throws. And the Celtics are getting the advantage of being the more flashy. Joe Sway called the Raptors boring, and they have been through two games. <laughs> this yeah, is what right. happens when you're on the wrong end of this. You have to try to generate favor. The coaches who are struggling, who are behind, have to try to generate something through the officials to get their team going when you score less than 100 points in both games. That's what Nick Nurse is doing here, and it's surprising to hear from the coach of the year, but we saw Fred Hoiberg do this a couple of years ago, especially when you compare this guy's complaints about Tatum and where's and Fred about Hoiberg Isaiah now? Thomas. Uh, Nebraska, something like that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my boy Fred, but yeah, I mean, I agree <laughs> with both of you guys. I, you look at this Raptors team, and guys like – who can get to the free throw line. They've done this before. And for Nick Nurse to, to, to pull up that string, it's like, come on, man. Listen, Jason Tatum, we've been talking about his ascension and what he means to the league. But when it comes to getting to the free throw line, this doesn't happen all the time. So this was – I just thought it wasn't the game to do that. It wasn't like Tatum was getting to the line three, four, you know, straight times. You know, it was sort of a quiet 15. It wasn't or like James Harden. Throw. Right, right. If he went hard and out there, or, or if he went hard and out there for the last three, four minutes, okay, that's a good time to pull up that card. But Nick Nurse right there, I don't know, man. It makes him look a little weak, if you ask me. Yeah. A little bit. So I, I think he should, have, uh, he should have taken accountability and said, listen, I should have called that timeout. But maybe he did. I didn't see the whole press conference, but that's the first thing I would want to hear out of his mouth. And he's given his players excuses, you know, instead of taking accountability. The, you should, right. you know, the players need to take, you know, Nothing Jason Tatum did have anything to do with Marcus Smart hitting five straight three-pointers in the fourth quarter, you know? Yeah. Talk about exactly. how to play better defense to prevent that. Yeah. Talk about what, what you can do to keep Kemba Walker from scoring, the, you know, one of the you know, biggest shots of the game. Talk about those things. Don't talk about a call that was missed or a call that maybe you thought was a touch foul. Or, you know, it's, it's, it's just sour grapes is what it is. It's, mm -hmm. And when you maybe. compare it to what Brad Stevens is like, you mentioned it in terms of how he comments on the officiating or – rarely ever does because we know today after the uh, game he commented on Jason Tatum's technical but in a way that said his defense on the final possession is the only way he was able to make up for his technical foul mm -hmm. admitting that he deserved it even though a lot of people thought it was a soft technical foul especially in the playoffs Stevens mm -hmm. thought he deserved it because uh, he, he most of the time he wants his players to take that accountability. So in that way, I think Stevens has definitely been a little bit more professional than Nurse in this series, but also on the court, I think he's done a better coaching job. How would you assess the head-to-head -head matchup between these two coaches? That's the thing. Nurse is on the sidelines, bent over. We did the hands on the head thing. You see, <laughs> it's, it's so in his head. And I thought, 
it got into the Celtics heads a bit too, the officiating at some spots, but that shows that it was going both ways in this one. You had the zero Toronto free throws in the first half. You had those two reversals on the video replays after that went in Toronto's favor. I thought this was a completely balanced game when it came to both sides getting screwed, which is the best you can hope for in the NBA, both teams leaving mad. Uh, so I, I don't, I don't know. I, it just irks me. It shows a team going in the wrong direction and, the adjustments aren't there. I thought they were going to be from a coach like Nick Nurk, and they didn't. They didn't have it at all here. This was this was embarrassing. But Bob, is there anything that you think can the Raptors do anything? Can Nick Nurse do anything to get his team back into this series, or, or is there nothing really? Left? The only thing I can think of is more Ibaka. Marcus Gasol has been useless in this series for the most part. He made a few nice passes in the lane in this one. baka has been great. His minutes got to go up. He played less than thirty here. He's killing them. He's a bad matchup for Robert Williams in a lot of those matchups. And I think he could challenge Tice, too, in the foul game with some of his upfakes and all that. And that is you, – didn't you just call him the best player on the team through two games? He's only playing 26 minutes in each. you got to have that guy out there more. Yeah, I'm going to give the edge to Brad Stevens for sure. Um, it's not by a whole lot, though. I did notice the adjustments that uh, Nick Nurse did defensively with guarding the pick and roll. The Celtics made – uh, heading into game one, which is something that you didn't see a whole lot in the first series. They're starting to pick and rolls uh, higher up on the on the uh, perimeter. And uh, Nick Nurse did a really good job of, of sort of uh, disrupting Kemba a bit. You know, he obviously was, you know, old for, for, for a while uh, throughout that first half. So I want to see a little more of that. But um, if I'm Brad Stevens, you know, I'm thinking he's going to come up with something else in game three, of course. And if you're Nick Nurse, you have to really start considering other options and trying to figure out, wait, how does Marcus Smart score – five three-pointers in a row. And I don't care where he was shooting it from because some of those, they weren't all contested. How do you stop the bleeding when that happens? Fourth quarter execution. Your team was able to survive that. 16 points in six minutes for Marcus Smart. And you still – I don't think any coach is ready for that. (laughs) But the Raptors were still one point away. It was a two-point game. And you have to find out what sort of go-to plays will help you push through in those situations because I think Brad Stevens has his number there. I mean, a lot, of the, a lot of the times with, with the Raptors, they'll beat you, and they'll beat you by 10, 12, or 7. You know, when you go down the wire with a team again like the Celtics, with more than one closer, I mean, that's when you can really find yourself in trouble against Brad Stevens and the Celtics. Well, Phil, yeah. you go, you're good, Jimmy? I'm good, yeah. I was just going to say the one thing, I think, if you're the Raptors, you, when, you, when you are on a little bit of a run like they had in that third quarter there where I think they went up 10 or 12 at one point, and the Celtics were playing their absolute worst, that's when, you, if you're the Raptors, that's when you have to keep the foot on the necks and you have to really, you know, just take it to them and build that 10 point lead. That's got to be 15, 20 points in, in this playoff series because you can see how quickly it can vanish. And the Celtics had no business only being down eight points when that fourth Isn't that quarter something? Started. This was supposed yeah. to be the tightest series, and we're sitting here saying, come on, Raptors, you can do it. Come on, you can, you can hang <laughs> with them. It was a tight game. It did come down to the final. It did. But, and it was a tight game because the Raptors didn't take advantage of – when they went on that run, they let the Celtics climb back in it right away after that. When the yeah. Celtics – looked at they had the Celtics on the edge. Well, for all of our Celtics postseason coverage, you can find it on our website at clnsmedia.com. And don't forget, for all of our video content, you can find it on our YouTube channel at Celtics All Access. The Garden Report is brought to you by Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code MAXWELL20 at manscaped.com. Take your grooming game to the next level.